our next speaker for the uh, program is uh, Vincent Rice, and um, I am going to introduce you, Vincent. Uh, if you would join me from what uh, there's, there's a lot about you on the uh, internet, so I had to pick something. <laughs> you don't have to say any of that. No, I'm going to say that. So, Vincent uh, joined WDC in January 2018. Prior to joining WDC, Vincent was a program manager at the Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development for the Division of Employment and Training. In that role, he evaluated the talent requirements of different industries and created targeted training programs to meet those needs. He also headed efforts to improve collaboration and communication between business community and the agency with a focus on improving processes and relationships across the strait. Previously, Vincent served as a, a division vice president and general manager for RMT, formerly a division of Alliant Energy Corporation. He also served as a business director for the aerospace division of Honeywell International and as a product development manager and a product line manager for Corning Inc. Vincent holds a bachelor degree in business administration from Hampton University and a master's degree in business administration from the University of Virginia. With that, Vincent, thank you for joining us today. Good morning, and hopefully my, we'll take my 10 minutes and use it productively. Um, this is the agenda. We're gonna talk about um, why WEDC thinks this is an important part for us to invest in or to consider investing in, and then some of the risks that we have identified that potentially could impact the state. And then there's some national implications that we can talk about, and then I'll give you some closing thoughts. Um, from our perspective at WEDC, we have some buttons that we can push. And these are the buttons that generally we talk about. How do we, how do we enhance business development for the state? How do we ensure that technology development is taking place to allow the state to, to gain a competitive advantage? And the other parts you can see for yourselves, but talent development and talent pipeline becomes very important for us because we've always got to figure out how we continue to grow the state and grow the population and the needs of the population. Now, um, there are three I's that I think are very important about impact, economic impact specifically. Innovation, from our perspective, is looking at how do we help ongoing businesses determine how to effectively create value or enhance their value positions. <coughs> Investment, who's gonna put the money there to make sure that those innovations take place? And the inventions, are opportunities that, that we're looking for from a material science perspective, from wherever, we're trying to figure out how do we create opportunity to create and create economic impact for the state. Innovation happens on a day-to-day -day operation, okay? We can look at an issue, we can try to figure out how to resolve it. Investment, how do we put money toward making those innovations come, come to fruition as quickly as possible, but invention, is an untimed special moment for many of us, okay? There's no guarantee that when we start something, it's actually going to return, going to return an investment. So invention from our perspective is a long-term investment, okay? We're looking at what opportunities can we do from a materials perspective, from an energy power and controls perspective that are gonna create those long-term market growth opportunities or new avenues for the, the state to find economic impact. So from our perspective, these are the kind of the three drivers of the three screens that we kind of put things through. Okay, so now, Brett talked about we wanted to get involved and create a center of excellence. Well, our thought was, if this is an opportunity that we can leverage and create a competitive advantage for the state of Wisconsin, and we want to create an opportunity where those great <clears throat> potentials can come together and grow. Okay, so does the center of excellence make sense? It makes sense if industry wants it that way, okay? 
We cannot drive anything from our perspective. We can support it, and we certainly can facilitate the process, but we want to create an environment where there's an opportunity to talk about what do we do with material science. So is this the right way to go? You in this room make that decision, okay? And from our perspective, it has to be able to stand alone and be viable on its own two feet or whatever we want to call it, okay? It's very important for us to say the investment that we put in place or the investment that we supported putting in place is able to sustain itself to provide the solutions from an invention perspective, from an investment perspective, and from an innovation perspective to continue to, to produce the results that industry and the state need. And then from our perspective, manufacturing is the lifeblood of Wisconsin, okay? It's the largest sector that we have, and it has a host of things in it. You talk about food and beverage, we talk about health, uh, bio life sciences. There is so much in it, but material, material science is very important to manufacturing continuing to be the driver of the state's economic potential. And does the center of excellence create a competitive advantage for the companies within the state of Wisconsin? So if you work together to try to develop new solutions, is that gonna create an opportunity for the companies in the state of Wisconsin to create an advantage nationally and globally? So from our perspective, if the answer at the end of the day is from this group or from a group larger that says, this is the way, the center of excellence is the right direction that we should pursue as a cohesive unit, we will work toward achieving the competitive advantage for the state, utilizing invention, innovation, and investment. This is the right place to play. Okay, so, so that's kind of from our perspective you answer the question of saying, this is what we want to do based on those three screens. We're going to be very supportive of being involved in this process. So why is this important to us? So I'm going to get really into the, the kind of the crux of things from our perspective. We talk about manufacturing. Well, one of the components of manufacturing in the state is the founders. And you talk about a location quotient of six, okay? That, Compared to everybody else in the United States, Wisconsin has more foundries, they have more people, have more revenue coming from this space. Well, when you start thinking about competition and what could potentially take over this industry, there are new material capabilities that are coming along that potentially can impact this, right? So how do we get two things to happen? How do we get industry in the space to begin to think about that and how do we get them to consider incorporating some of these new technologies to offset what could potentially happen to the overall space okay material science you're in this room for us that's important so this for us is saying how do we offset this competitive disadvantage potential disadvantage with investing in this group to talk about being able to make this group aware of the potential issues or pitfalls that they may be facing. Okay, so the next one is, oh my God, we got so many of these things. Machine shops across the state of Wisconsin. I, they've all started for a host of reasons. They've got a host of capabilities. But if you look at this chart, <coughs> this is what a machine shop is dealing with. Okay, and Starting over on the left side, look at the number of materials that they have to process, okay? And then we start talking about moving further and start talking about the types of equipment and the types of materials and the types of issues that they have to deal with in processing. And then that, this, this point here, there's competition coming. 3D printing additive, additive equipment capabilities. Notice that 80% of the machine shops aren't even fooling in this space, okay? So from my perspective, 
And I start thinking, I've got 9,000, about 5,000, just about 5,000 shops across the state at various sizes. I think I would really be interested in being able to help make them aware of that <coughs> technology and the potential that that technology could have on their operating environment. And then we start thinking about their performance characteristics. And this is where they have to fight, right? They're saying these are the things we have to supply. But look at this. We're only getting a utilization of 60% of our equipment. And by the way, we could produce anywhere from 480 to 5,000 parts. One place. Okay. So they're having to make huge transitions in their day-to-day -day life to be able to produce against those material types with that type of competitive threat, okay? So from our perspective, another potential, but this is all we're talking about from the innovation perspective, right? And many of you today are gonna to be talking about it from the invention perspective. What are the new opportunities? What are new materials? What are new solutions that we could be looking at? What new market opportunities? But this is an ongoing deal that we have to contend with and these are customers for us that we need to work with to identify how we help them continue to grow and evolve. So then we start looking at how's performance. We start talking about utilization and we start talking about performance. Generally, most companies where I came from, everybody talked about, hey, how, how's our equipment working? We're operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How are we doing? Are we getting everything we're supposed to be getting? So everybody's focused on utilization in production environments. So, that's just exciting if you look at this. This is over the last 10 years. What's going on? We're still in the, we, we still haven't reached in some production facilities you could see up in the 90s and 100%, right? These are the foundries. Their production processes are not as consistent as they could be. And so from our perspective, is that a material issue? We were talking at dinner last night. Um, these are things that I think that from your perspective, your technology, knowledge, your innovation, I think these are the kinds of things we ought to be thinking about from our perspective. And then we start thinking, of, well, there's a great trend there, right? Um, and these are U.S. Census source data. But I mean, the, the reality is that the companies in our space, in our, and these are national numbers, but the reality is the performance of these companies on utilization of their existing equipment is not very as good as it could be. There are a host of reasons why, but some of them are associated with materials. Okay. Oh, well, there was one more. That's aluminum. That's their primary uh, material that they use. And as you can see in the last few years, you're seeing that the trend of that is downward as well. So for, from our perspective, how do we address that? from an innovation perspective. Okay. So, materials impacts the state supply chain, okay? From our perspective, again, how do we create a competitive position for our industry in the state? How do we enhance the capability of that supply chain? Now, if you think of the normal machine shops, there are not that many people working, and their primary focus is trying to deal with those many issues that come into operations day to day. They need help, okay? Um, and the larger OEMs in, in, in Wisconsin are often pulling requirements out of them versus enabling new technology to be introduced and a clear understanding of what the challenges that they face. So from our perspective is how do we enhance that? How do we enhance the supply chain? How do we enable a greater potential of these companies to see and realize greater benefit from their operations? That's what we're looking for. Um, and then the other part is from the OEM perspective, the large OEM perspective, is there a way to do more with this group that reduces the cost of their operations because we know that many large companies are not spending as much internally on R&D, but they're outsourcing a lot of that work and they're utilizing universities and different associations, different organizations. So 
How do we do that? How do we create an opportunity where general research can be done in a cost-effective way in a group setting? Okay, and from my perspective, if this opportunity happens in its general and it enables the enhancement of the supply chains in our area, there's a value there. We're talking about the right type of investment and the right type of, that's that eye that's important for us. And then how do we create an opportunity for the universities in the area to validate the types of research activities they want to do? How do we support that? And can, can the Center of Excellence enable us to do that? So, in closing, from our perspective, yes, manufacturing is the lifeblood of the state, but in reality, materials is a revenue for many of the manufacturing organization. So being able to provide the right solution creates a great opportunity for us. We cannot create anything. All we can do is facilitate. So our product is facilitation. And so being able to make the connections and being able to create this opportunity, and if this is the right thing to do from a center of excellence perspective, that creates an opportunity that's a competitive opportunity for the state of Wisconsin and the economic impact that could be generated from that we are in the right place together doing the right thing. And so, um, and our focus is value creation. So thank you for your time, thank you, and I hope to hear great things out of this so that we can look forward to even greater opportunities for our overall state. Thanks. Thank you very much.